Bonjour et bienvenue au webinaire Servim. Welcome to the Servim webinar. Uh, Aujourd'hui, uh, today, uh, we will hear the presentation by Isaac Neri Gomez Sarmiento. Uh, et je donne la parole à Denis Lorando qui va présenter Isaac. Merci, Annette. Uh, ça me fait plaisir de présenter le, le séminaire de, de Isaac. Isaac est un étudiant en physique médicale qui travaille sous la direction du professeur Luc Beaulieu du département de physique et pour lequel je suis et pour qui je suis co-directeur parce qu'il y a une petite implication en, en 3D. Donc, euh, on a jugé que c'était pertinent qu'Isaac puisse faire une présentation au Servim puisqu'il y a quand même une composante, ce qu'il va nous présenter ce matin, une composante 3D. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Isaac Gomez for this uh, morning webinar. Uh, Isaac is uh, uh, supervised by Professor Luc Beaulieu from uh, the physics department, and he works in uh, medical physics. Uh, Isaac, uh, his project is mostly, mostly in, in medical physics, but since there's a 3D component, we thought that it would be relevant to uh, have him present his uh, webinar to the CERVIM. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Isaac Gomez. I'm a master's student of physics at Université Laval. Today, I'm presenting some progress in my project EMT to CT scan image registration of implants used in HDR brachytherapy. The presentation is structured in the following way. First, I will give an introduction where I will define some important concepts to, to understand my project and also the objective. Then I will present uh, some data, uh, how I did the data acquisition of my project. In part three, four and five, I will describe some of the algorithms that I use for processing my data and also uh, give some results. And in part six, I will uh, give some improvements that could be made to my project. Cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide. In the, in, in the fight against cancer, one in two uh, cancer patients will require radiotherapy. Uh, radiation therapy, uh, the, the, the percentage of that, that is used uh, for the percentage of, of, that, the, of the cure patients, people were cured by 40% uh, uh, of the cancer patients were cured by radiation therapy. There are two types of general types of, 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 um, of radiotherapy, external and internal. In the external, um, radiation is used and produced by a linear accelerator. And the internal, the, the, the radiation is, is in the form of radiation seeds that are introduced in the patient. In turn, uh, HDR brachytherapy is a type of internal radiotherapy uh, for localized cancer. Can be used uh, like in prostate, prostate breast, or, or cervical cancer, and many others. It uses one high dose radiation seed. He, he, uh, the seeds look uh, are, are like these ones. They're like uh, more or less the size of a grain of rice, and they are inserted in in the in 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 in, in the in the patient through through what is called uh, either catheters or uh, uh, applicators, which are implants. These seeds are stored in this machine, which are, which is called uh, an a brachytherapy afterloader. This device, um, the 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 seeds that are stored in this device, come out of this of uh, these tubes and get into the patient, and will travel into the next or in the patient uh, in the tumor site. So the H, so the HDR brachytherapy uses. Uh, it can be it can use uh, several imaging modalities. One of them is the CT scan, which is computerized tomography. It's a three D medical imaging modality using X radiation. Um, it's basic. Uh, we can think of CT scan uh, basically like a three D version of a radiograph. Here, the low pixel values represent uh, low de uh, low density, and the high pixel values uh, represent a uh, high density tissue density. So here is the afterloader, the, pro the research unit I use. And in this afterloader, it has a cable, which is called a check cable. It makes sure that are, there are no obstructions uh, when, when, the, when the seat comes out, the radiation seat. And in this cable, it has a sensor attached to it. This sensor has electromagnetic tracking technology. This allows to reconstruct the catheters and implants where the, the, the where the seed will travel through. 
fits place, it is placed in, in, in a magnetic field generator like this one. So before I go into into my into my project so DFT, I have to I, I, I have to define what's image registration, which basically is a, a process in which two or more data sets are put into one same reference frame. In this example of uh, in the in the medical in the in medical image, uh, th there's a registration of CT PET imaging, which is uh, which is this is the CT or compared tomography and positron emission tomography. And here is the resulting uh, of, of, of the image registration. So my project objective is to accurately registrate EMT reconstructed implants using HDR bracketherapy into the CT scan reference frame. That is to better to better uh, reconstruct reconstruct the implants. Um, this uh, this will result in 3D coordinates that we will have in the CT reference frame. These 3D coordinates are used for better. For, op for optimizing the delivery dose to the tone. Uh, currently in clinics, uh, these 3D coordinates uh, are, um, are detected manually, or there are some methods that can automatically get it from the CT image, but for example, uh, when the catheters overlap, it can, uh, it can have some trouble when, uh, dif uh, differentiating them. So here is the phantom I use. Uh, Phantom is a um, device that is it is used for calibration purposes. It contains four templates like, like the one you see here. These templates contains uh, ceramic marbles, which are calibration points uh, used for the EMT, EMT to CT registration. Inside these templates, there, uh, it can be, uh, there's, there can be here uh, a 6F catheter. Inside the catheter, the check cable with the EMT sensor travels through it, in order to reconstruct its path. Here, uh, there are more other catheters in the phantom. Also, there's a gene applicator, which is for gynecological cancer. So here is the setup. Uh, below the phantom is the field generator. And uh, I did uh, this, the reconstruction of the, of the implants using the, the position sensor with these parameters, uh, dwell time of three seconds and the position of two millimeters. This means that the position sensor, every two millimeter step, uh, step forward and register, uh, register um, data and stay there for three seconds every, in, in every position with a sample rate of 40 coordinates per second. In total, uh, the, the total time it took, it was 57 minutes, but there's, there are other ways like to, in, uh, to speed this process to, increase, to make it faster. So I took my, my um, my phantom and, and place it in a water cube to make a CT scan of it. Uh, I place it in a water cube in order to improve to, to improve the, the contrast in the in the in the catheters because they are filled with air and it makes a great contrast between water and air. So here we can see them. Um, in total there were 387 images of uh, of a thin, of a slice with a slice thickness of 0.6 millimeters. These images are well. Um, we will say a low resolution, and we compare with uh, like typical cameras we use every day. But this is the resolution they they use in, in for CT scan, uh, which is twelve bits. And the total time it took for taking the the images uh, post processing time it was less than two minutes. So here we can see our calibration points in the temp in the CT image, it can be created in there. But what about the, in the EMT reference frame? We, ca, we, we have to first find them in order to be able to do the registration be the, between the EMT and the CT reference frame. So that's, that's uh, one of our objectives, to find the, 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 the marbles in the EMT reference frame. So what did I do? Uh, here's where the, the 3D computer, computer vision comes from. Uh, I use uh, a cat. Uh, 3D model of 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 of, of my template uh, to find uh, the the relative position between between the the marble and the S shape, which can be reconstructed in the EMT. But before I use the CAD model, I have to make sure that the CAD model matches all four templates and also find the center of the marble on the CAD. So I use in the computer vision lab at the University of Laval. 
uh, the metro scan. This is a laser scanner. Um, and, and before doing the, the, the scanning of my templates, I painted with yellow chalk. That is to increase the, the, the opacity and get better uh, scanning. It took me around two, hour, uh, two hours per template, uh, uh, including also the post-processing time. And I uh, also did uh, two, uh, two scans of the same template, one, one, one straight, like we see here, and one upside down, and you will see. So here are the resulting scans, the, uh, the straight and upside down. And then with the VX Element software tools, I got rid of the soil, clean the mesh, and fill some holes. Also did the alignment and the merging. Before comparing the CAD and the 3D scan, I used the, the Mesh Lab tool uh, of, of remeshing, uh, which uh, increases the, the number of triangles in, in, in the CAD. That is to better compare with the, with the DX element solver. So here is uh, a 3D scan for one template. Here is uh, the CAD. And here is um, a color map that indicates the distant differences between the 3D scan and the cut. Here in the green colors, we can see a uh, distance difference between plus minus 0 0.05. And as we approach to, to warped colors, warped colors like uh, red, uh, uh, the, the distance uh, difference increases. For example, here in the marble, it is uh, very red. That is because in the cut, it is not present the, the marble. So here is, uh, here is the result for all the four templates. And after that, I did a cross-section profile of, 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 the, of, of, the, of the 3D scan. And I, and I also did a fitting of a, of a sphere in here of, of the marble. And I decided to put my origin, my origin of, of, um, to, to be the center of the marble. So in this image, we can see in the thin line, uh, the black thin line, it, this is the cat. And we can see the, the color dots. Those are the, the, um, the results from, from the 3D scan. So we can clearly see that they really match. So I can, I can either use the cat or, or the scans for doing my uh, for, for doing process. But I decided to use the cat. So I, I isolated the cavity the the shape cavity in and, and divided in up and down parts. Then I computed the the middle part of the cavity. And in this plot we can see the 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 reconstruction of the catheters in the EMT reference frame in, in red color. And here in this uh, this black uh, black S shape it is the cat. So the goal now is to align this this uh, S shape in the, from the gut into the EMT, in, into the EMT, so we can know where is the marble in the EMT reference frame. So I decided to use the iterative closest point algorithm, uh, which um, which tries to minimize the the sum of the square differences uh, between uh, between the points of source and reference and, and a target. So here is in uh, the alignment process in the left image. And we can see that for some for some S shape in the empty reference frame, the model is in the right, which is the right position. But for some for other, for some are in the left. So that's that's uh, the first trial I did. Then, uh, in order to improve this, I said, okay, maybe I can take out the tails, the extra tails. I only leave the the the, the reconstruction inside the temple. But that didn't work anyways. What did work for me, it was to add extra points in the CAD model in the end as to, as to break the symmetry between the S-shape. And I did it in two steps. I first did an alignment. And after that, I got rid of the extra points I, I, I added and did a second alignment. So now uh, the marbles in the EMT reference frame were found. OK, now okay, we have the 3D coordinates in the EMT reference frame. But now we have to find the, the 3D coordinates of the marbles in the city reference frame. So I use a thresholding, I use a thresholding in, my, in, 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 in my city volume to detect first the, uh, the, the, the marbles. 
And then I use a canny edge detector to know the edges of the marbles. And with this ed, uh, with these uh, detected edges, I plotted I plotted them. I have them here in pixels, and I converted them to to, to millimeters using a conversion conversion factor vector. This conversion this uh, conversion factor vector can be obtained from the CT scan image properties, pixel spacing, and slide thickness. So I I fitted a sphere with a radius of 2.5 millimeters, which is the radius of my marbles, using the least square fitting solve with fixed point iteration. We can clearly see here that the that the that, 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 that the volume of the of the fitted sphere is less than the volume of the of the cloud form. We can we uh, we can exp it can be explained because of the of the resolution limitations of uh, of the of the city scan. So here at the in this table, the mean distance difference between the uh, sphere surface and the points for uh, for all my four models. So here is uh, how this is the question: How do I do an EMT to CT registration? Well, since my um, phantom is rigid, I can use a rigid transformation. A rigid transformation is is this matrix like here we see. It has twelve parameters. Here, these parameters that I'm uh, pointing at are, are, are parameters that describe a rotation. Here, these parameters are, are parameters that describe a, a, a translation. So once I know this really transformation, I can use it and multiply it with my EMT data converted to from millimeters to pixels. And then I can get, uh, I can have these points in the city, in the city reference. So now, okay. So we have so I have four marble centroids in the city reference frame, four marble cent uh, centroids in the EMT reference frame, and twelve uh, unknowns. That allows me to uh, to solve a system of, of of twelve unknowns and twelve equations. After arranging all the equations, I can have this matrix here in this uh, twelve by twelve uh, matrix. Uh, we we found we find the 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 EMT the EMT um, data of the models and 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 here in 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 this vector we we find the 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 marble centers but in the city reference so this will allow us to know the rotation and translation parameters but before i can use it uh, i have to make sure my rotation uh, my my rigid my transformation is a rigid matrix because it by 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 doing angrash angrash mid orthogonalization if I don't do this, I will get an affine transformation. An affine transformation includes uh, either, uh, scaling and shearing. But by doing the gram schmidt process, I can get, I can have a read transformation and, and I have to make sure it's a rigid by multiplying the, the inverse of the, of the rotation matrix with itself. And if it gives me an identity matrix, it's a, it's a rigid transformation. Also if the determinant is equal to one. So here now I plotted the EMT data here, and here are the the marble centers in the city reference frame. Then I here multiply with the conversion factor vector that I talked before, and here I, by solving the big matrix I showed you before, I can uh, I was able to put the EMT into the city. But this is I I I have to uh, warn you. This is a uh, this is the non-rigid uh, transformation. If I do the or the the orthogonalization transformation, I will I, I will get a, a, a rigid one, and uh, and after that I will do an, an an ICP an ICP refinement to to make a better line. So here is a 3D view of the EMT data in the in the city reference frame, and we'll see. Uh, in the in 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 a, in a two D view of the of the data. So here is the overlay of the of the CAD model of the templates, and also on, and in red and the red dots is the the EMT data. We can see that for some templates uh, it um, really matches well, but for some other it doesn't. This might be explained of some possible uh, distortions that that could have happened in the in the in the taking of the data in the EMT. 
Here's a close up of one of the templates. And with the head of the templates, I could uh, define some boundaries around the edge shape that will help me to define some boundaries to, to, to get the 3D coordinates of, 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 this, of, the, of, in, in, of the edge shape in the CT data. I use a grayscale level analysis to get the, 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 the coordinates in the, in, in the city. And now in this image, we can see the, the city, the, the coordinates of the edge shape in the city in, in, in white. And in red, we can see the, the, the coordinates in the end. So I use a nearest neighbor uh, approach to find the closest points in the city uh, from the city to compute a mean distance difference between the EMT and the city. So here is the results for all the four, for all the four uh, templates. And for the other catheters that were straight in the V-shape, here is the other results. This is, this is another view. And we can see the whole day pretty much well. And also for the applicators in here. And here in this table, I summarize the mean distance difference between the EMT and the, and the CT reconstructions with a total uh, mean distance error of 0.71 plus minus 0 0.46 millimeters, which is, uh, which is within, the, uh, within an acceptable clinical deviation. If it's less than two millimeters, okay. We can see in, in the, if, if we analyze the components, the, we can see that there's like a bigger deviation in the, in the, in the X axis. This can be explained if, we go, if I go back to this, uh, to this uh, reconstruction of this catheter. We can see in the X axis, there's like a big distance difference, differences. Uh, so that might be an explanation for this big uh, division we get here. So what are the next steps for improving my project? Uh, next steps is also to obtain city coordinates of applicators because uh, here, if I go back, I, I didn't comp uh, compute the city, the, the points in the city reference frame for the, for the, um, for the applicators. I might have, I might have to do it, to do it manually or find other algorithms. Also, I have to try more robust registration algorithms. That is to improve the alignment. Also try new setups, add more calibration points. I'll also make faster, uh, a faster EMT reconstruction because the, the one I took from, for this uh, particular experiment took about 57 minutes, but there are ways to uh, make, it, uh, make it faster. So here are the references. And I have to thank Professor Luc Beaulieu and Denise Lohondor, Dalinto, the new wallet, Janet Wabar, and the funding from the partnership and CERT Electra. So thank you very much. Uh, questions and suggestions. Merci, Isaac, for the excellent presentation. Very, very interesting application of the vision 3D, with which we are not really familiar. Uh, Je, je vais demander à l'auditoire s'il y en a qui ont des questions. Pas, euh, je vais regarder s'il y en a dans le chat. Euh, moi, moi j'en aurais une pour commencer, Isaac. Je, je te pose en français, tu réponds en anglais si tu veux. Euh, okay. Là, tes expériences sont faites sur un phantom rigide. Okay. Oui, oui, oui. C'est sur un phantom et, rigide. Okay. Ici. Et, et C'est le, le, le truc dans le. C'est ça. Maintenant, euh, j'imagine que euh, l'objectif, ça va être d'appliquer ça sur des patients qui ouais. vont être des objets qui ne sont, euh, sont pas rigides, parfaitement rigides. C est, c est, mm -hmm. Le corps humain, c'est quand même un peu plastique. Est-ce que tu penses que la méthode va pouvoir fonctionner quand même? Et est-ce que si ça fonctionne, tu vas atteindre des précisions qui sont suffisantes pour les... les euh, les besoins de, de, de la, pas de la chirurgie, mais de, du traitement. Okay. I thought about that. And one of my ideas, but I don't know if it will work, is like uh, putting with the, this, um, uh, these templates, these templates, calibration templates, but not on the patient, but close to the patient. Ah. Yeah. So that will, that will, um, uh, avoid the moving 
moving of the templates. Mm -hmm. Oui, oui, OK. OK, je comprends. Yeah, that, that's et, et one là, of my, my hypothesis. <rire> OK, je comprends. Oui, c'est valable. Euh, J'ai une deuxième question, euh, puis avant de, de voir si right. des gens qui sont intéressés à avoir une question, euh, qui ont des questions. Est-ce que right. euh, l'objectif final, c'est de savoir où sont rendues les, les, les sources radioactives dans le patient? C'est ça? En, oui, en te ça, guidant ça. sur le CT, mais avec les coordonnées qui sont fournies par l'EMT. C'est ça l'objectif, c'est d'avoir le meilleur. Parce que ce que, ce que je pense, c'est que, et ce que je pense savoir, c'est qu'au au, au début, avant même l'insertion des sources radioactives, il y a un calcul de dosimétrie qui dit que les sources devraient être placées à tel endroit dans le patient pour avoir un maximum d'effet sans détruire les, les tissus avoisinants qui sont sains. Alors, c'est ça l'objectif final, c'est d'avoir la meilleure position possible pour chacun des grains de manière à avoir le meilleur traitement possible. C'est ça l'objectif yes. final. OK. That's OK, mais ben merci. All right. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions? Est-ce qu'il y a des gens dans l'auditoire qui auraient des questions? Ben, J'en aurais peut-être une autre, Isaac. Là, tu as mentionné des temps de, de, de prise d'image et de, et de, de, de ouais, c'est ça, surtout des, des temps de prise d'image. Mais l'opération comme telle d'insertion des sources, est-ce est que tu sais en gros comment de temps ça dure? Donc, tu as un patient, tu veux insérer les sources, tu as, as fait ton calcul de radiométrie et là, tu vas aller inser, insérer les, les implants. Euh, ça peut prendre combien de temps une opération? Uh, like for the clinical setting, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know much about that. Uh, but I think I've heard, I've, I've read that it's like uh, 30 minutes, I don't know, but I think I will, it will take more, like all the preparation, uh, like, mm -hmm. like for doing the, because before, before inserting, before inserting the, 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 the radiation, it's, uh, they have to be like a planning, taking the city, taking the images in the city with the, with the catheters inserted. And then they do like the, with this information, like the planning, but uh, the, the exact time, I don't know, but. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, and uh, uh, the, uh, now, now you're, you're, you're exploring a prototype. Yes, yes a prototype. For, uh, in, in, with a, a phantom, but the ultimate goal is to actually yeah, perform a clinical the study. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and that, that's the ultimate is, goal. But uh, as as all, uh, excuse me. Is this going to be part? Is the clinical part be uh, going to be part of your master thesis, or or is it left to someone else? For this master, I don't think so. What I I, I talked to Luke, but he told me that in order to be a to be like a clinical study, uh, the the afterloader, which is this device, uh, has to be approved like for like uh, Health Canada. Because this is a prototype. Because not oh, okay. not not all afterloaders have the sensor the sensor included in the check cable, and and this has to be like approved in the health, in the health Canada. But I have one. Um, there is one uh, member here in the audience, uh, Christopher, that he's from Germany, and he also works with this prototype. Because in in, in the world there are only three uh, types of this prototype. Uh, one here in Canada and two in Europe, and and he says that in Germany they use it like for like in a clinical setting they use two they use this this prototype like for inserting and like making the reconstruction of the end of of, of the of the catheter and they use like the real one like for in, like for delivering the the, the dose, but uh, I don't know if he's still in the audience I invited him but he he uh, might sorry, yeah yes. Christopher he's there. Uh, Christopher, can you te tell, tell us more, more about us? More about that? Sure. Um, welcome. Um, and hi, I'm Christopher. I've only just arrived to Quebec. And uh, as Isaac said, it's, it's true that uh, we in Germany, in Erlangen, we perform a clinical study using this um, combined prototype afterloader, but we do it with breast cancer patients. And um, the way we do it is that this afterloader doesn't have an active radiation source yet. It's supposed to be like that in if it becomes an actual product by Elector. 
but uh, the way we do it is we perform uh, the radiation treatment, with, which is fractionated, so it splits up over five days, and they have nine irradiations. And after each irradiation and after each imaging, um, so CT imaging, we perform a measurement with our afterloader prototype. And this way we can get an idea of the 3D uh, geometry of the implant. And this also gives us information about what happens inside the breast. So if it's swelling, if it's moving, if it's like changing, and this can have implications for the dose delivery, meaning if the dose doesn't get to where it's supposed to be, um, the treatment outcome might be um, worse. So that's the ultimate goal to get information about how we can um, adapt uh, the treatment. So it's basically in the whole topic of quality assurance over treatment. Oh, that's that's great. So my understanding, Isaac, is that you're developing a prototype on a prototype of afterloader. So it's really yes, edge, it's uh, edge, uh, leading edge research. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I knew the afterloader was new, but I didn't know it was still a prototype. A so prototype, yes. It's, prototype. It's, very, it's very interesting. Any other questions from the audience? Est-ce qu'il y a des questions dans, la, dans les participants? Sinon, s'il n'y a pas de questions, je vais remercier Isaac. Thank you very much, Isaac, for your uh, webinar, which was very interesting and very different from what you, we usually uh, deal with in our Servim uh, webinars. But since they're 3D, we understand what yes. you, uh, we have, a what you have presented us. Thank you very much, <laughs> Isaac. Annette, est-ce que tu veux dire un petit mot avant de terminer? Yeah, thank you very much, Isaac. It was a very interesting presentation. Uh, and so I would like to invite everyone to uh, come and join us again next week uh, when we will have another presentation given by Simon Pierre Deschaines uh, from Norlab. Thank you again. Thank you. Merci. Au revoir. Bye.